My name is Carl Ganas. I like to think that uh, my life is a creative one, and that uh, and that this, that life is uh, can be um, approached as an art form. And so, I guess in that sense, you might say I'm an artist. I teach figure drawing to professionals, as well as anybody that's interested. So I do that. Um, at a place called the American Animation Institute, primarily, um, for young people coming in that are interested in developing skills, uh, drawing figure drawing skills. And I'm also teaching professionals in some of the studios in Los Angeles, such as DreamWorks and Disney Feature and uh, TV. And I've been at Sony and at Rhythm and Hughes. I've also taught for Warner Brothers and Nickelodeon and a variety of places. And basically, I've been a, you know, a kind of a have gun will travel guy. And I kind of like it that way. I was a storyboard artist for Disney some, some years ago. And uh, prior to that, I'd been a storyboard artist kind of um, around town and, uh, and, and until I went on staff at Disney. And, uh, um, I was working there for a while, and um, many of us had offices, luckily, luckily enough, and not cubicles, and uh, we were able to decorate our offices, and uh, people would come into my office and they'd see life drawings or figure drawings on my wall, and they said, um, wow, you can do that? And I was asked by the head of television at that time, Tom Rizika, if I would teach um, my co-workers how to draw. And I declined because I didn't want to be teaching my uh, directors and producers um, who were above me and that I was about to go back to work for five minutes later what they should be learning in terms of uh, their skills. However, when I did leave Disney, I went strictly into teaching. And it was not more than three months that I was back there teaching all of those people anyway. So that's basically how I shifted from the um, that particular aspect of this professional career into another aspect of it. Now there's a lot more history, by the way. I mean, I've I've been a billboard painter, and done lots of different kinds of things. You know, doing 40 foot paintings in a single day or two, stuff like that. It's all contributed. And uh, prior to the storyboarding, I pretty much concentrated on my writing skills for about 15 years. And so they just all came together very nicely to, um, to uh, this new enterprise, which was storyboarding. In my drawing presentation to my classes, uh, I have a, 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 a system for learning how to draw, which I hope will promote self-education. So what I do is I take the drawing experience and, and, and break it down into three sections. And the idea is that if these three sections, if, if you break them down into these three sections, you've got um, uh, the opening, how you begin a drawing, and then how you develop a drawing, and how you bring it to some sort of completion. And each one of those sections, essentially, will show you where you're, if you're really looking at them, will show you where your weaknesses are. So it becomes self-evident uh, where the work needs to be then. So instead of working with your strengths to just keep everything looking good, one moves into one's weaknesses where um, it's not so pretty. And uh, ultimately people are willing to do that because it, what happens is, is that it strengthens, it, it strengthens a whole aspect of their drawing that they, they have been ignoring. The reason we have a tendency to ignore that um, is because it always appears to be messy at the end of the day. And we're always trying to tidy up. So the way we tidy up our drawings is to do all the things that we're comfortable with. And when we do that, we avoid the things that we need to learn. So I try to get people to be um, uh, less interested in tidying up and more interested in developing uh, new understanding in the areas that they've been avoiding. So then it becomes a discussion about, well, what am I avoiding? And uh, 
when we get into that particular area it gets pretty interesting. Many people might find it really difficult to state clearly what it is they want to do with the drawing. So for them it's like um, trying to find, uh, to take um, a particular moment in the drawing and define what it is that you want to do with it. So for instance if a your subject is taking a certain pose you might say well what is my subject doing? I'm more interested in that for instance than asking well what does my subject look like? What is my subject doing brings you right to the verb and the verb allows you to get right into the story. So if you can, if you're for instance a writer and you're, you've got 120 pages of script, you might say, well, net it out for me. Uh, you need to economize. Give me just the short story. Now, what was interesting is, and I, I, uh, when, when we were uh, uh, with Little Bird out there in the desert, he gave the same analogy that I always give to my class which is this. If you go with some, to some producer with your script and you've had an appointment with that producer, it's exactly the way I do it. Notice how close it is to his. Um, uh, and uh, you go to the secretary and she says, or he says, um, yes, I don't see that uh, you're listed here for the day. So what are you going to do? So you sit there, you, you wait. Um, and so the producer comes out of his room and you catch up with him and say, I've got a script here. I really, uh, I had an appointment. I thought I had an appointment. He looks at his watch, walks up to the elevator and presses the uh, button and the elevator comes and he steps in and he says, you've got 30 seconds or however long it takes us to get to the bottom floor, go. And if you have that situation, you're certainly not going to start with once upon a time. That's a wasted effort. So what it means is, is you need to crunch right down and be really clear about what it is that you want to develop, what you want to say. So that's what this first stage is in drawing. When you start out, you don't just start meandering around. You get right to the point. And what is it that I want to say? If you can clarify that really quickly, then you have the synopsis for the whole story. Then you can start developing it with a kind of confidence of where you're going to go. What that first stage of the drawing sets up is that purpose, you see. And if you can do that, then the following stages of the development of your work will follow through. Um, now there are people that go through their lives that way, right? Just bumping into things and moving along. Um, I'm not even saying that to have a purpose is the ultimate purpose. But if you start with something, it gives, you, it gives you your first path. And on that path, it's likely that um, it will bring you other things that correspond to the uh, sense of direction, even if it's an adjustment, even if you take an adjacent direction. And ultimately, which is pure creativity, blaze your own trail. When one blazes one's own trail, one has a already made a trail of experience and one goes with that experience and I think it's extremely useful that way. Creativity I don't think though can be defined by skill. This is what we spoke about yesterday. Um, if one is creative within one's craft um, it usually comes after the craft is understood well. I'm not saying that people don't probe around and play and uh, explore. You have to be doing that the whole time. But ultimately your creativity is held within the structure of the craft. And so that kind of creativity um, has a launching pad and a, and a, la a landing um, uh, tarmac as well. And so um, one can do many things, but it's within a certain kind of context, if that makes sense. However, um, creativity isn't, uh, in my opinion, locked completely to craft. Uh, one can, I think one can be, or people can be creative in their lives in a variety of different ways, just in the way they choose to um, put their shirt on or wear their shoes or 
change their hair or the way they cook a meal or um, uh, speak conversationally or um, any number of things that way. Even in their choices in driving, um, being creative about how they might not be moving in the same old ruts all the time, but creative new ways to go home, for instance. So, uh, any, any variety of things along that line uh, are possibilities for making life interesting. One can make up things to do that will um, you know, kind of pull one off the well-trodden pathways of one's life. It doesn't have to be much. It can be little things at first. Those little things might lead to other things. So then one might ask, uh, well then what's the, wh where's one's intent? I was talking about intent and how important intent is in the beginning. It doesn't seem like a big uh, thing, it doesn't seem all encompassing to follow a string. But the intent is really very big, it's to, um, it's to open up and have a new experience rather than following the same, the same river of thoughts that's so powerful in one's life maybe go down some tributary or other and see where it leads and if it opens up to uh, something larger or more interesting. It seems to me that, that working with the, uh, the human figure allows me to go deeper into the big questions that we all have. Because ultimately that's, that's what I see and that's what um, the human condition it, I think it's a window into the human condition when I draw. So it can be anything from dealing, for me, with the aesthetics of the human form to the narrative of Jim, Bob, Mary, or Ted. You know what I mean? So one is we're, we're looking at the human figure objectively, how beautiful the form is. We want to show that explore it, maybe the energy of it, and so on. But uh, on the other hand, suddenly it's somebody, it's, it's Mary. And, uh, and now it, and we're looking at the, the narrative moment. What is it that Mary is doing? She's a character. Suddenly it's the internal behavior that we're reading on the surface of the drum, which is the skin, and the costume, and how I dress, and all the rest of it. It's all in a an extension of what I'm trying to say in a certain sense, or what I'm comfortable with, or how I want to be perceived, the rest of it. You know. So all of those things are interesting to me, everything from the, the, objectif the objectifying the form itself right on over to, well, who is this person? And where does it show? And how do they express themselves? And so on. The question is the paramount thing. If you come and you're working without a question, it's just eye to hand, there's nothing going on. The moment you start asking yourself, well, look at that relationship, I wonder what, then suddenly there's a kind of focus. And that's already a question. And that question, questions act like a lens. What they do is they bring focus to the endeavor that I'm taking and give it direction. And focus allows us to see things that re relates specifically to the questions that we ask. And, uh, and so therefore, I, I do like to ask at the very beginning, so what's your question? When I say to my students, so how are you? I don't expect them to tell me they're doing well. I expect them to tell me what it's, what's happening in the trenches where they are right now. Right? Oftentimes they misunderstand me and they tell me, I'm doing fine, thank you. you know. But it's really, what's your question? And where can we, let's start with that, and where can we go from there? The thing that, that strikes me the most about those that have craft is they still have difficulty with the creativity. And I've always thought that those people, that when they were very young, have done things on their own or done creative little enterprises, um, before they were interfered with by adults, had the greatest chance of coming back to that one day because they've got something in their past. They have the taste of what it is to 
really explore like that and have their answers come from within them rather than a textbook. So if the answers are coming from me, that voice from within, rather than the voices in me that are the voices of the textbook, that, and I can recognize the difference, then there's a better chance. Those of us that didn't have that, that we were interfered with way too early, like, um, that's a really nice tree, darling. Let me show you how to do a branch. From that moment on, the child looks to the adult for approval rather than to the inside for what a branch is about. Once that looking to the outside takes place, we spend the rest of our lives doing that. So the whole point about creativity is how to get back to the voice that doesn't need approval. It doesn't mean that one doesn't look for direction from someone, but creativity is about how to find the voice that doesn't need approval, that is willing, like Alice, to go down the, their own rabbit hole and explore and, in a way, face the wind, which is forward, rather than the past, which is history.